This is Harsh Rules. I'm Ben Harsh, and today I'm going to show you some items from my Wargamers Toolkit. Now, these are the tools I use to make life easier when playing war games. If you find any of these useful, you might want to add them to your own toolkit. And if you have tools of your own, please share them in the comments section below. Now, the game you see here is Commands and Colors Tricorn. Now, I just finished a video series. Um, teaching how to play this game. Um, I have this set up to kind of demonstrate how some of these tools work. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started looking at some of the tools I use. Now the first tool that is in most Wargamers toolkit are tweezers. So these are just, a, you know, some very simple Tamiya curved tweezers. Um, there are a lot better tweezers on the market. Uh, these are the ones that I use just because I have them around for when I build models for hobbies. What I use these guys for, for is to pick up um, units, blocks, and things. Now, tricorn, it's kind of not necessary. Uh, as you can see, the blocks are pretty thick, um, not so hard. What people usually use them for is cardboard chits like this so i'll put this one down this isn't this tank is not part of tricorn uh this is from great war commander so very easy to pick up flip over put down um if you if you have a big guy it's hard to get a get a grip on them and if the if the board is really cluttered with these things you end up moving stuff around and creating a big mess so that's why people use tweezers second on the list uh, looking through my, my pile of stuff here, let's take a look at this guy, especially for Commands and Colors games. This is a retractable badge reel. So um, usually you wear this on your hip. You have a security badge for it. Um, I use these for hex-based games when I need to draw a line of sight. So um, these, I think, are pretty cheap. You can find them on Amazon. Uh, I got this from my security desk at work, um, but this is how they work. So most war games will have you drawing a line of sight from the center of a hex to a center of a hex. So you just simply put one end on the center, pull out the retractable reel, and then you can measure to the centers of hexes to see which is in line of sight. Very simple. When you're done, just let it go. It snaps back. So that is a great tool um, that's very cheap and free in my case that um, you can use to, to draw a line of sight. A lot of people use strings or rubber bands. I just like this retractable reel, so that's what I use. After that, the next on the list I would say would be, and this is more personal preference than anything else, but it's a pointer. Now, this is a cheap laser pointer that I got at, I think, a dollar store for a dollar. Um, it has two functions, so you can draw, you can use it to shoot a, you know, an LED spotter um, to point out on the board. Now, this is pr mainly if you're, you know, if you're going to shoot a video, um, if the board is too big, or you just want to point out things to people on that you're talking to, like it's here. Here's a regular unit, whatever. So there's that. There's also more of a traditional pointer. Now this thing is ridiculously huge. I've seen smaller ones um, that just extend and you have like a regular school pointer. Um, there are smaller ones. This one's kind of big. Uh, kind of overkill for this small of a map. Uh, if you're playing a really large game, um, you might want to use it. I, I think it's overkill, but that is the analog version of the laser pointer. So what becomes challenging with war games is often they'll ask you to mark three to five units, and then you will need to one by one go through those units and perform a number of actions. You're doing math, you're calculating things, and then you got to remember to go back and find out what's the next unit. Now, in a perfect world, which obviously I don't live in, there will be distraction never fails my wife will call she needs me to open a pickle jar or something Salespeople come to the front door the telephone rings i get a text message there's the world is full of distractions 
So when you walk away and you come back, it sometimes can be a little difficult. Or if you're just like me, you just can't remember anything to begin with. So what I do in this situation is I use markers. And in that particular case, I use these pennies. You know, not very expensive. Bad joke. So with markers, when you're selecting your units, just put down a penny on each set that you're going to use. Um, you know, in this, if this was the beginning of the game and we had a cannonade, it's where you fire with your cannons, I'd put the penny on both of those. That's really simple. Maybe in other instances, you'd want to mark this leader is going to move. Maybe you're going to move this guy too with your card, depending on what your card is, right? As you're playing through, you know, you can take them off as you activate them or leave them on if you're trying to keep track of you know, which ones you've used and which ones you haven't used yet. So if it's a really long game where you have to play through and use all your units, not this one, you may want to put a penny or, or some sort of marker on this. So that's another tool I use for all distractions I get as well as just keeping track of things. Next up, another memory tool that's really useful, trying to keep track of numbers. Now in this game and a lot of other games that we have like combat calculations, that need to be done, where you're adding numbers and taking numbers away. So one good way to do this, um, this is a just a simple counter. I think it's like five bucks on Amazon. Um, hook your finger through, get a good grip on it. It's got a little, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little number readout. So as you're adding up things, you just click on it and add it, okay? That's one way to keep track of a number so and particularly I think in com combat commander or other games where you are doing a calculation you're taking actions and you got to remember things the counter can be useful can be easy when you're just counting up you know um, modifiers and things some people are mathematical geniuses and can keep all that in their head I am NOT one of those people so that's a counter is a good way to keep track of that stuff so another good way, if you don't have a counter, and you know most people have polyhedron dice, um, which are simply multiple-sided dice. So this is a d10, this is a d20, here's a 12. Um, so if you don't have a counter, a lot of times Combat Commander, I know people will use the 20-sided dice and just set it to whatever side they need to remember and keep track of. You know, you can use um these dice most people have a set somewhere if not they're not that expensive um, but this is a great way to keep track of of the math especially if you get distracted or you know you're, you're having to multitask different things now with that said um it most gamers will have some dice tools so this is a dice cup another way to use these is for chit pulling. So if you have a game, uh, you'll need to put chits of some kind. Now these are just, you know, some basic chits. Throw these guys in there, stir it up. It's opaque, as in I can't see it. And you can reach in and blind pull out chits. Also, besides a cup, you know, for token draws, you can also use a bag. So here's a bag. Uh, that I use has a drawstring top. So if you want to cinch it down a little bit, whatever, you know, it's, it's a pretty small bag. You can put your chits in here and blind draw out of there like that. So, um, if the cup is not your speed, you can use a bag as well. That's another great way uh, to do blind draws. Other tool I use, and this is just me being, uh, me, is this dice box. So all this is, I take my dice out of here, because I'm on a small table playing this game, when I roll dice, I don't feel like getting on the floor to pick them up when they go flying off the table. So you get a dice box. So really what this is, you don't, I didn't particularly buy this for this purpose. I bought a new wallet and it came in this kind of leather covered box. So when I picked up my wallet, I was like, well, this is perfect for rolling dice into, and that's what I use it for. So if I need to roll dice, I don't have my cup, but you can see this. 
you can throw them in here like that. They don't fly out. There's enough space in them to bounce around a little bit and, and land. Um, but that way, I don't have to deal with them flying off the table, and I can keep it contained. Or flying onto the board, knocking over figures or, or some foolishness. So now let's also talk games that have that need money. Now here's a big wad of cash from Axis and Allies. If you have a game that's being lazy and they're like, well, you know, you know, keep track on pad and paper. Uh, you don't have, don't suffer like that. You know, people love to hold things when they're playing games and and fiddle around, and it, it gives them something to do, especially if someone else is actually doing the playing and they're doing the waiting. Now, if you're a person that uh, doesn't like paper money, um, a lot of people will use poker chips, which essentially are just stand-ins for money. Now, here I have um, just some basic poker chips. I think I bought this. I have a big kit of them. I think they were like 10 bucks or something like that. Um, but these are nice, they're weighted. You know, you can just, everyone just at the beginning of the game just say, okay, this is gonna stand for $1, this is $5, this is $10, $1, $5, $10. So I've cleared the table and I wanna show you one last tool. And this one comes highly recommended for all war gamers. Well, this isn't the tool. But here's the problem. So this is um, the map to Paths of Glory. I have an older edition of the game that has a cardboard map. So cardboard maps, paper maps, all have one problem. And that is when they're folded out. Let me get this all squared away here. And they're folded out like this. They have creases in them, and the creases pop up. Now, you could go in and just sit there and mess with them and fold them and, and whatnot. But if you're like me, who has undiagnosed OCD, I, I can't play under these conditions. This is, you know, I'm all the time trying to get things squared away. It's just a nightmare. So what I absolutely have to have is Plexi. So let's put this down. This is very, I don't think, know if you can see it. It's very thin plexiglass. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I think it was like six bucks. I probably used a 40% off coupon, so practically made it free. But anyway, this is it. Um, you don't need like Gorilla Glass that's like, you know, an inch thick. Um, this works great. So just put it down over the top. You get it all squared away so you don't have any OCD freakouts. Um, and I'm sure you can see all these reflections because it is highly reflective, but um, when playing now, it's almost like it's laminated. Uh, you can put your items right on top. Everything is, is nice and flat, and I'm a happy camper, which is the most important thing. That concludes this short video. Just wanted to share my wargaming tools with you of what I use to make my life easier. Once again, if you have tools, um, I'd love to hear about them. Drop a line in the comment below. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. And as always, this has been Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this has been Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.